Hey YouTube, it's been quite a while. Uh, with that being said, let's just go ahead and roll right into this. This is going to be a time lapse video, so please follow along with me as we build this long range desert group patrol car with a 20 millimeter cannon. First thing you'll notice here, Dragon, uh, when they call out the parts and everything, they say you're not going to be using part A40 and you're not going to be using part C40. Um, we're going to go ahead and try and see if we can't use those anyway. And then uh, they give you two different options here with the decals and the paint scheme. We're going to go with uh, this, um, they, they make it look pretty blue. I think I'm going to take it kind of more uh, silver gray and slate. Going to do the, uh, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it to be completely honest with you. Is it Cantor Scheme? Contour Scheme? But it's basically uh, one of the, uh, the standard British camouflage patterns from uh, North Africa there in the early 40s. And then just a quick unboxing for you guys there, just so you can see that it's uh, brand new, right out of the plastic. Uh, I haven't even read any reviews on this kit, so uh, kind of follow along with me here as we figure it out together. One last uh, quick shot here with all the tools that, uh, well, not all the tools, but most of the tools that I'll wind up uh, um, using here throughout the process. Uh, I also wind up grabbing just some really fine sandpaper and um, some jeweler's tweezers that, uh, you know, kind of stay closed unless you press them kind of the opposite of your standard tweezers, I guess. Hey guys, I'm just going to go ahead and bring it back to real time here just to talk through some of the, the process as we go through this video. Um, I like to use these metal files from Timea when I'm doing a lot of the cleanup and uh, the way I use them, I just let the file, like the weight of the file, do the work for me. I don't put a lot of pressure on it um, and I find sometimes with sandpaper you have to use a lot of pressure, um, even those, those small sanding sticks just because they're so lightweight. You really have to use a lot of pressure and sometimes with these finer parts I wind up breaking them. But with the files, because they got a little more density to them, you can kind of just do very gentle passes. And they're coarse enough that they'll take down a lot of that material on their own. Um, and so if you're careful with it, uh, in this instance, I'm, I'm showing the um, exhaust pipe, which is a very, you know, long, fine piece that had a seam line and a couple of sprue attachment points that I had to, to sand down there. And the curve of this one specific file, it's got like a half moon curve to it. And it, uh, you know, comes to a decent point. And it let me get into the curves of this exhaust pipe and kind of take down that whole seam line uh, really without issues. And I know if I would have tried to use a number two blade or um, you know, even, even a sanding stick or something like that, there's a good chance that if I wasn't careful, I probably would have you know, pushed down a little too hard, put a little too much pressure on it and you know, tried to go too fast, kind of going in like a back and forth motion and just uh, you know, snap the part or something like that. Um, and that's, that's the one thing with the file. I just I go in one direction. Uh, I usually push it away from me and then pick it up completely, kind of reset it, and then push it away again. I think uh, files tend to work better if, you, if you're kind of more um, repetitive about that kind of process as opposed to, you know, like sandpaper or sanding stick where you kind of go back and forth and back and forth. And I think sometimes that, uh, that motion can also kind of snap some of these smaller parts as well. So I think just kind of taking it easy and going in one direction, being very deliberate, um, with a file might uh, might serve you better in some of these delicate part situations. And then I'm just going to slow it down here. It's kind of my first uh, mistake, if you want to call it a mistake, but it's uh, you know one of those things you can easily fix. Um, you know, I didn't provide enough uh, support to this part. I was using the blade and a lot of pressure to kind of like chop off some excess plastic. 
didn't provide enough support under the one side and I wound up uh, partially snapping off half a leaf spring but I was able to get some glue on there right away noticed it pretty quick um, and I was able to kind of save that piece without having to kind of you know essentially glue two pieces together it was really just almost like a loose tooth kind of situation and the, and the glue was able to kind of like retain that piece but so we've got the uh, the footage sped back up here this pretty much wraps up all the uh, the part cleanup for step one uh, there's eight steps total so we'll get the rest of these parts here um, you know now that they're cleaned up get them all glued on here to complete step one move on to step two and then uh, continue through the process Here's uh, most of step two is just basically adding the tires on, but um, you'll notice here this is one of those parts that Dragon says you don't need. It's a spare tire, and uh, even though I know it's from their, their other kit that doesn't include the 20mm uh, cannon, I feel like there's still enough room uh, in the back of this uh, truck bed to go ahead and throw on that spare tire, and I've seen plenty of reference pictures where even these versions with the 20mm uh, cannon taking up most of that space, they still wind up throwing a tire or two around. Um, just because, you know, if you don't have it, you need it. It's a bad day.
normally I do a, a lot of test fitting. I do a lot of um, you know putting the parts where they need to be, taking a look, moving things around. Um, but I uh, I think it was just because I was trying to film the whole thing and just kind of knock it out that I was really just taking a lot of the instructions on faith. And um, the end of step two has you gluing on this bumper, and then you don't wind up adding the uh, the cab. But uh, I think honestly, instead of trying to get some support and help this bumper dry even though it really doesn't have a whole lot to uh, kind of keep it onto the frame uh, it's probably just easier uh, if you guys are going to build this kit to go ahead and add this bumper farther down the road when you've actually got the uh, the front cab and everything glued on because then it, it just gives more structure for that uh, front bumper to glue into but it wound up working out.
these uh, next two parts, I just I couldn't even do out of the box. They were just absolute garbage. Uh, I think they were supposed to be some kind of bedroll or some kind of tarp or, or you know, tent. I, I don't even know what Dragon tried to do with this because they just look like, uh, I mean, like melted blobs. And then they weren't even completely, um, you know, it was like a short pour or whatever you call it, where, uh, you know, if you just looked at the backside, there was just a, just like an air bubble void where it just had never filled completely with plastic. And I mean, there's detail on like maybe a quarter of the part and you could tell just even looking at the box art, you could tell that these are supposed to be some kind of tarps that were strapped down here on the uh, front bumpers. And then I went ahead and confirmed with the reference pictures and yeah, I'm just going to have to do something to, to scratch build them. Um, yeah, interestingly enough, some of these vehicles didn't even have the, um, the mounts there. They just went ahead and kind of strapped these things right to the fender. But, uh, you know, the mounts look fine, um, you know, given the scale and everything else. I think the mounts are perfectly adequate. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave the mounts on there. And uh, I'm going to try to do some kind of scratch building here where I've basically got a couple, um, I think three different sizes of tubing. I'm going to go ahead and kind of, um home the tubes inside of each other almost like one of those Russian dolls um, and then uh, just go ahead and try and use that to at least build a profile um, the diameter fits perfectly inside of the um, the mounting brackets so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then kind of at the last minute um, in the next video or you know maybe just go ahead and skip to painting and kind of show you how it, how it is after the fact because I don't know if I can film <laughs> the sculpting process but uh, just kind of sculpt on some straps and some some texture to kind of give it that uh, that bedroll look uh, while at least having kind of like a cylindrical profile and um, you know almost like the, the the tree ring kind of look on the uh, on either end
Oh man, yeah, if you guys couldn't tell, this was easily the single most frustrating piece. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, it's, you know, it's, it's unfortunate sometimes, I guess, with 70 second scale things, you know, that, uh, require the kind of detail and, um, you know, small, small delicate parts, uh, you know, just to, just to kind of portray accurately, or at least, you know, in scale, um, you know, the, the look of whatever it is. I mean, but just to, I, I don't know. I don't know if it was just the way that it was designed. I mean, it, it went together well enough, I guess, on the actual mount. But uh, again, this is a, this is a dragon kit, and it's pretty easy to see that they uh, really didn't do anything to kind of engineer this uh, 20 millimeter gun to this specific kit. And obviously, this kit was originally released as um, a different version of this uh, this truck with the uh, you know the smaller. I'm not sure if it's a Bren gun or whatever it is, but you know with a, with a significantly smaller um, you know just machine gun on a on a little panel mount in the back. Um, so the, the base of this, um, truck bed is, it's got these, uh, you know, the grooves and the, and the slats like, like it would, but they didn't do anything, um, you know, with the base of the, um, 20 millimeter cannon to really allow them to kind of fit together. Nothing really clicked together. Nothing really felt solid. And I just, I got so frustrated. I wound up taking my, uh, my chisel blade and basically just slicing the floor of the, uh, of the truck bed flat uh, is the only thing I could really think to do um, <clears throat> just to basically make a flat surface to actually mount the uh, 20 millimeter cannon to and uh, even the even the bottom of the cannon just has that one little uh, attachment point that's designed to kind of pop through the hole um, which is you know considering the size of the cannon it's a very small attachment point uh, it's not very tight in, in the sense that it, uh, um, I mean it's, it's still the same kind of like you know half moon shape but um you know it just it just doesn't quite doesn't quite fit in doesn't really lock in doesn't really feel secure even even when i was able to sand everything kind of smooth there and um it just didn't provide the best the best support uh, i just you know kind of like loaded it up with glue and i think this is one of those situations where i'm just going to try and do a little bit of pigment or something in the back uh, just to try to make it look like it's a lot of uh you know desert sands and things that have kind of blown in there and accumulated in those hard to reach places just to cover up the fact that uh, a significant amount of the uh, the floor detail has been uh, chiseled away
important because again I want to go ahead and use the uh, the spare parts the dragon says you don't need to I you know I wind up uh, throwing the spare tire in the back there I think there's plenty of room to kind of get away with it um, and then I also uh, I go ahead and uh, add the uh, the same gun that I was talking about whatever I'm again I'm not sure uh, not too familiar with uh, World War II British weapons if it's a Bren gun or if it's a different kind of a uh, I'm um, not like a Lewis gun. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making things up at this point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, whatever whatever the other uh, platform was that the uh, kit originally had included in the back that uh, the kit decides to replace with the 20 millimeter uh, cannon, I uh, just you know go ahead and kind of rig it up in the front seat there so the passenger, um, you know, just like I've seen some of the reference pictures where they have multiple platforms uh, on the on the one truck, I I go ahead and uh, mount it there to the front just to give the passenger. Uh, an option to uh, to have a weapon system as well. So that's it, guys. It's all built up. Um, yeah, not not too many real um, serious complaints. At the end of the day, the kit came out just fine. I think. I think it looks great. Looks the part, especially uh, here in 70 second scale. Lots of little details that I can uh, hopefully paint up and, and weather nicely. You know, again, sorry for uh, being away for so long. Appreciate you guys watching the video. Um, I do plan to put out like a little uh, kind of channel update just to explain where I've been for almost the last year and you know what I've been doing things I've been working on um, and also announcing the uh, 2021 which I know we're almost wrapped up here but the 2021 braille scale build off that's actually uh, hosted more by Kenny Coughlin over at Hobby Link International and then um, yeah just uh, uh, some some future channel plans and uh, things of that nature. Thanks again for all the support, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, I've, I've seen my channel even uh, kind of continue to grow in my absence uh, in terms of subscribers and, and people viewing my videos, and I, I really appreciate the comments and everything. Um, I plan to go ahead and uh, add some figures in here, too, from a company called uh, D-Day Miniature Studio um, out of Poland. This is their uh, Breakfast in the Sahara little uh, resin figure set, three figures, and a uh, little field stove. Thanks for uh, checking out the video. Thanks for you know, all the likes and comments and the support uh, from you guys out there. And uh, if you got any questions, if you guys have built this kit, if you, um, you know, saw something I did that you thought was weird or whatever, just, you know, shoot me a comment. Let me know your thoughts or uh, just want to let me know that, yeah, it's definitely a Lewis gun. It's not a brain gun. And, you know, yeah, I, I uh, had to had to Google it. But, uh, yeah, certainly a Lewis gun. You know, always, always happy to hear from you guys. Always do everything I can to reply to all the comments I get. And, uh, you know, I really... Uh, Really appreciate it. I wouldn't uh, obviously be making this this content if uh, I felt like no one was watching it. So, thanks, guys. Biggest thing um, would absolutely be a shout out to my wife. Um, I'm actually using her uh, computer. Um, she got a new computer and let me have her old one basically. So I <laughs> wouldn't be able to make these videos without uh, without her computer. My old computer I was using at this point is just pretty much shot. So, thanks very much for that. Um, really. <laughs> really couldn't do without you you know obviously I say that and I, I mean it all the time but uh, in this in this sense there really wouldn't be any video production um, you know nothing nothing at any level at that point so see you next time